Hello, everybody. I'm Larry Ridley. Welcome to the NFL on EA Sports. Straight ahead. It's only week one, but we've got the return of Adrian Peterson to his former stomping grounds as the Saints get set to battle the Vikings. For the call, let's send you out to the broadcast booth where we'll join our commentators, Brandon Guyton and Charles Davis. All right, Larry, it's one of the new jewels of the NFL, no doubt, as you get a look inside U.S. Bank Stadium here in Minneapolis. It can certainly get loud inside this building. And just a few moments ago when the Vikings were introduced, it was downright shaking in here. They're set for football as the Vikings get ready to do battle with Drew Brees and the New Orleans Saints. And hello again, everybody, with Charles Davis. I'm Brandon Gordon here in the booth. And, Chuck, you take a look at this matchup. I don't know if it's going to be one in the trenches from the quarterbacks out, whatever. It's going to be a good game. Oh, without a doubt. I can't wait to see the big fellas have an impact. We're always spotlighting those wide receivers and quarterbacks and running backs and even the defensive backs. But the big guys, I can't wait to see which one tilts the balance for their team. Here's a punter, Thomas Morstead, to get this one started. And we are underway from downtown Minneapolis. To return, here comes Marcus Sherrills. And he'll bring it a few past the 20 to the 23-yard line. So here's the Viking offense making their way out. They'll be led out by the former Heisman Trophy winner and number one overall pick from Oklahoma, it's Sam Bradford. A lot will be made of his accuracy and the completion record he set in 2016 where he completed 71.6% of his passes. But it doesn't surprise me at all. That's always been the number one part of Sam Bradford's game coming out of Oklahoma. His ability to deliver the ball accurately on time and leave his receivers in a great position. Bradford on first down. And complete right side to tight end Rudolph. Ten yards there to start the drive and just enough by about the length of the football for a first down. You talk about a combo that works really well. Sam Bradford, short, dark throwing quarterback, and Kyle Rudolph able to work the seams inside and make those tough catches. Now Rudolph wound up shattering his career high with 83 catches last year, third among NFL tight ends. carry for Latavius Murray. Not much there. Maybe a couple up to the 35. And the offensive starters for the Vikings. Minnesota had a very optimistic vision of what they would do on offense in 2016. But a couple of key injuries altered that landscape. Running back Adrian Peterson and quarterback Teddy Bridgewater. That led to them scrambling throughout the season to try and fit together their offense. Try to put the running game and a new passing game together. And instead of having a big year, they finished 28th overall in total offense. That was second down run for Murray. And he'll get this up to about the 40. It'll be a gain of five, but still about three yards shy of the first down marker. And now it's third down. And here now, New Orleans defensive unit. The New Orleans Saints have struggled on defense for the last few seasons. In fact, they ranked dead last against the pass in 2016. But they do believe they are getting better. Defensive end Cam Jordan has become one of the better all-around pass rushers in the league. And they picked up Sheldon Rankins as a rookie last year. They expect to get a full season out of him in order to increase their numbers on D. And this defense looks for one more stop here on third after the run. Now Bradford, and he's able to find Diggs. And he's got the first down yardage as he brings this up to the 47. It'll go as a gain of six that time, and it moves the chains as well. That throw's not going to get him a whole lot, but that really didn't matter, did it? They got what they needed on that throw. Picked up the first down, and 
I'm going cliche here. Game of inches, partner. Absolutely. Well, and you talked to me a lot about opening drives, how key those are to set the tone. You kept the drive alive. Third down conversion here is big. That's what they were aiming for. You want to keep moving the sticks, get into a rhythm, gain confidence as you go along. And right now, mission accomplished. On first down, Murray. And an alley to run. And he's brought down. And a nice carry there of 15 yards. You and I both know that you don't really truly replace Adrian Peterson. But Latavius Murray's a really good back. Similar running styles, too. Won't wear the same number, we know that. But when you see him run, you might see a little bit of that in him. Upright with some power. Offense comes to the line now, first and ten. First carry now for the rookie, Dalvin Cook. And he's going to fight his way forward here for a modest gain. Give him five on the carry there, and it'll be second down. I remember the first time I saw Dalvin Cook play in college. I was watching him on TV, called a scouting friend of mine and said, who is this guy? He's special. And he said, dude, you watched a home run hitter on the field. Yeah, he was special in Tallahassee. Left Florida State, their all-time leader in rushing yards and touchdowns. Again, it's Cook. And not much running room. Down to the 32. It'll only be a gain of a yard, and it sets up a third down and four now. Well, so many times we look at a short run and we praise the offense for trying to set the tempo and establish things, but the defensive guys, hey, they just won the battle there. It wasn't a big run given up. They don't always have to absorb the body blow. Sometimes they dish them out themselves. Bradford from the gun on third down, and that is incomplete. Everything about that play tells you about today's NFL offenses and what they're asking out of running backs. You can't just be a guy who can run the football. You have to be able to catch it as well, and he didn't get that done on that play. On now is Kai Forbath to try the field goal. This is a 49-yard attempt. Right hash. I don't think this will even... Nope, it doesn't even get there. Well short, and this will remain a scoreless game. Well, this winds up an empty possession. Everything looked okay. He just never got the ball on target. And knowing him, he'll be disappointed with that effort. The Saints coming out now to take the field. After the missed kick, they're in really good position. They'll begin this drive at the 39 now. Here we go, the first carry for the former Viking Peterson. And he's going to bowl his way forward to the 48. Nine yards is the pick up there, and they'll have a second and one. Awfully nice to see Adrian Peterson back and running well. Look, it was just 2015 when he won his last rushing title. Got hurt in 2016, and that season became a bit of a wash. Yeah, it did become. I'm hoping to get back to that old form that you're alluding to, though. He does have three rushing titles, including that one you mentioned in 2015. Second down following the run. Again, Peterson. And he'll get it into enemy territory just across midfield at the 49. Give him three yards and a fresh set of downs. Second and one is often an invitation to take the big shot downfield. I bet the offensive lineman said, are you kidding? We just get on our backs and let's go get the first down. They love being physical. First and ten, here's Breeze. 
Oh, look at Thomas wide open. And he'll be taken down, but not before getting this inside the 30. A good pick up there of 20 yards. So after that big play, let's see if they can catch their defense maybe on their heels. First down, here's a run with Peterson. And he'll get about four as he's brought down at the 24. Tough running there. That's a hard-earned four yards. Yeah, those are the unsung kind of runs. They don't fill up the stat sheet, but they do set you up in good position on second down. Counting down toward the midway point in corner one. On second down, here's Breeze. It's brought in right side by Ginn. Breeze to another longtime vet, Ginn, for the New Orleans first. To win any route, you've got to break down the defender, and that's exactly what happened here on this really nicely executed curl route. First down and 10 now for the offensive group. And the former Heisman winner, this is Mark Ingram. And he'll take this one down near the 15. Give him three on first down. It'll set up a second and seven. And here comes play number six on this drive. Breeze to Ingram on the draw. And able to surge forward for about five yards down to the 10. You never know where motivation's going to come from. I remember in 2016, Mark Ingram fumbled in two consecutive games and got benched in the second game but bounce back to go over 1,000 yards for the season. Yeah, first time in his six NFL years that he's done that, finished with 1,043. They'll run it. Here's Peterson. And he gets the first down yardage he needs before he's brought down at the six. Give him a gain of four, able to convert, and that sets up first and goal now. I don't know about you, but that almost felt like old-time football there. Third and two is not necessarily just a running down anymore. A lot of times they want to throw the ball. They went back to the roots and powered forward and got the first down. has it six yard line first and goal and they'll get him down here at about the five yard line only a yard on the pickup there second and goal be interesting to see now what they do offensively down near the goal line after not much there that time as the offensive play caller that may change your sequence now instead of coming right back with a running play you may have to go to the air So they're on the five-yard line here, second down and goal. And he'll get blown up behind the line of scrimmage, back at the six. They'll lose a yard, and it brings up third. Defensively, I think they can smell a stop ball right around the five here, brings up third. And I think what they've done is they put doubt in the minds of the offensive guys. What do we do? Because now you don't have a go-to play. Either side they pick, throwing it, running it, it won't be easy. So backed up to the six now. Third and goal. Working from the gun. It's Breeze. And this is going to be incomplete. I know every offense wants to start their snaps closer to the goal line. 
but it's actually harder to throw the ball in those situations. You throw into that tight coverage, you see what happens. Hard to get the ball in there. Not enough space there. Lucky maybe that it wasn't intercepted. And Lutz's kick is good. And the Saints are going to take a 3 0 lead. Well, it's a night game, a lot of energy in this building. But the visiting team here, they get the ball on the opening drive, and they find a way to at least produce three. And things are just getting started. So you can't say that they've taken the momentum totally, but a good start towards seizing it in this game. Morstead, the punter, out to kick it off. This will be taken to the back of the end zone. And no thought to bring this one out. He'll just go down to a knee, and he'll take over at the 25. Now the Minnesota offense set to take over again. And they had compiled a pretty long drive last time. Unfortunately, though, it ended with no points after the missed field goal. And that can hurt the psyche of a team because as they drove downfield, you know you're never supposed to count points in your mind until they go up on the board. But let's face it, we've been there. We've seen teams before. They were counting on those points. They didn't get them. Can they come back now, start over again, and grind it out? They begin the drive with a run by Murray. Oh, an absolutely filthy juke. He's got some space now. And he's able to get this one up to the 45-yard line. And Murray's still down. Maybe shaking up that goal around. Let's hope he's all right. While the trainers take a look, we'll step aside. So the offense has it first and 10. And now some motion before the snap. And this will be our first penalty of the night's proceedings. That's on the veteran guard, Alex Boone. Still first down. So the penalty by the offense, and now they face a first and 15. They go play action here on first down. And his throw is incomplete. Stephon Diggs, his intended receiver, and that'll bring up second down. Let's face it, perfection is something we all chase, whether it's playing this game or whatever we do. Hard to attain, but that's what they were searching for as that pass goes incomplete. Bradford hands to Cook on the draw, and they see right through that defensively as he'll be hit and taken down to the backfield. It'll wind up being a loss of two, and they're going to face an uphill battle here on third and long. If you're the coaching staff upstairs, you might want to file that play away. Do you see how fast the safety closed on that one? Coming up in run support, made a big-time tackle. Might want to try and check into a pass next time. Yeah, got him for a loss. Really, really great play defensively. The Saints with an extra defensive back here on third on the field. Could they blitz? Right. 
from the gun, Bradford. And he'll be out of bounds just shy of the 40. The 21 yards there as they convert on third. And that's how you pick up a first down. Not only does he make the catch, but has enough body control to get his feet down inbounds, toe tapping and dragging to make sure he gets it done. down here's the run with Cook they'll fight forward for a couple down inside the 40 again with Cook and he is met at the line of scrimmage and he goes down right there officially no gain on the play and they're left with a third and eight big boys down there in the trenches and a nice play to stop them cold nothing there yeah when you talk about big boys you talk about those defensive tackles those nose tackles they're not just big they're immense and what a <laughs> big time play there Third down, Bradford. The left side caught by Diggs. And he's able to get the first here as he's taken down at the 25. 14 yards that time for number 14. I don't care how many times we see it, I still get a kick out of watching quarterbacks and receivers do the pass trick in pregame warm-up. But I always remember that when we go to practices, we see that after practices as well. They really tune it up, don't they? They tune it up. They know why they do it for these situations. First down. And they build that trust, and that's why they're able to find him in this type of a situation. And before they can get settled in here, time expires. On the first quarter of action. It's a three-point game here early. We're back to Minneapolis in just a moment. The NFL on EA Sports is fueled by Gatorade, the sports fuel company. Back now with Charles Davis. I'm Brandon Gordon. Second quarter begins with the Vikings holding the football. And they're on the move here. They've got it first and ten. Getting the handoff from Bradford. And able to work his way down to the 16. Give him nine on the carry that time, and they're set up with a second and one. This drive is turning to an extended one, and, and the guy carrying the ball, he's becoming more like a body blows guy. Every carry is putting some damage on the defense. So after a while, I'm not too sure how many guys are going to want to run up and tackle him. Second down, Cook. And after the good game last play, this time they say, uh-uh, as he's going to be stopped behind the line of scrimmage. It's a loss of two, now third down. We all have habits. We can be somewhat predictable, and you know me pretty well on second down and short. What I like to say? Play action. Yeah, without a doubt, I thought that was a great spot to call it. Instead, it didn't go their way, did it? No, defense sold out for the run. Worked out well. The Vikings on third down. They've been good, three for four thus far. Here it's third and three. 
Bradford. And that'll be caught by Diggs for a Minnesota touchdown. Stephon Diggs, an 18-yard touchdown grab. And the Vikings are able to strike for six. All drives that result in points hurt a defense, but when they are the sustained variety, play after play, and they just can't get off the field and stop them, that can be demoralizing. Kai Forbath on for the extra point. So he missed his lone field goal try, but he's got this one as that extends their lead. So that drive goes a full 80 yards in 10 plays. And it all culminates in a touchdown for Minnesota. Forbath out to kick this one away. This is fielded at the goal line. And he'll get it up past the 20 to the 22-yard line. The Saints offense now, they get ready to head back onto the field. And last time they got three points, but it was a chip shot field goal. And when you go to the sideline after a chip shot field goal, maybe the offense not too happy. It's a balancing act, isn't it? Because you're exactly right. They're none too pleased that they didn't punch it in for six points. But they also have to remember, they did put points on yeah, the board. Three points is three points. And in this league, <laughs> you take points when you can get them. Not easily done. They start the drive with Peterson. And a short gain there as he'll get it up only to about the 24. Two yards on the pickup there. It'll be second and eight. Well, they held him to a short gain on that one. And it almost felt like on that first run, they were trying to just throw the jab at him. So how do you stop a jab? Get closer and smother it, just as they did on that last play. They run again with Peterson. Takes this up just short of the 30, but he was able to avoid that earlier tackle. Nice move. It'll be a gain of five, but still about three yards shy of the first down marker, and now it's third down. Well, if you're a football guy, that's a pretty run because everyone is in sync right there. Obviously, the guy carrying the ball, but how about the people up front? Leverage, athleticism, they created some nice space for him. Bree's going to try and throw on third down. And that is incomplete. Let's face it, you can run the route tree as many times as you want, get in sync, practice it, do all those things. But once you get to game speed, it doesn't always time up quite that well. That one goes incomplete. Now the ninth-year man from LSU, Thomas Morstead, on to punt. Marcus Sherrill's back deep for Minnesota. Cheryl's to return it. Well, that's going to go in the books as a 55-yard punt. Well done. And it'll be Viking football here as they take possession. Here's Stephon Diggs as he and the rest of the offense get ready to go again. Previous series, definitely a focal point. Three catches, the touchdown grab. As a DB, your former DB, is there a number of catches on a drive where you're like, oh, he got the best of us? I'm not sure there's a number but there's a great feel. And what he did on the last drive, yeah. <laughs> Especially with a touchdown. Yes. You're never way, happy. You're exactly right. The way he capped it off. So you feel that at the sideline, and now you're looking at your buddies and saying, okay, what are we going to do to take things away from him? Because I'm not sure the other guys can make those sort of plays. So let's make sure that we don't let him get going again. Gets this to the 24 for a gain of four. Now it looks like we'll get a timeout as there's a Saints player down here on the field. Well, he gets attended to. We'll step aside.
And after the play on the ground, that brings up second down here. On the ground, it's Cook. Takes it to the 26, just a one-yard gain. Well, he hasn't made much of an impact in the running game thus far, and after that last run, not much is going to change in that area. He hasn't been able to get anything going, and really the offensive line not helping him much. The Vikings on third down. They've been near perfect, four for five to this point. This will be third and five. From the shotgun, it's Bradford. And this is going to be incomplete. And right now, I take my rudimentary kindergarten skills and draw where the tackle box would be because that was close. I thought he was in the tackle box. He has to be very careful where he gets rid of the football from that spot. Yeah, they say there was a receiver in the area, though. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's always a receiver in the area. And Quigley now on to punt as he sends this one away. Here's Ginn. They'll call that a punt of 59 yards. Tough to do better than that. And the Saints will take over with a first and 10 deep in their own territory. Out onto the field comes New Orleans. The crowd may be losing just a little bit of the edge after back-to-back -back punts. They want some big plays. They want to see some offense. They want to see somebody break away, whether it's through the air or on the ground. Now it'll be interesting to see where the patience is on both sides. Each head coach... Can you hang in there and not try and force something that could put your team in some jeopardy? Now a play fake here on first down. He's going to air one out. And that is caught on the right sideline, but out of bounds, says the line judge. The throw took him a little too far in second down. Well, this secondary has done such a good job of frustrating these receivers tonight. Another example right there on the deep ball. Sometimes when the sun goes down and it's just the bright lights in the stadium, there's a little extra spring in their step, doesn't it? And that's what we're seeing from the defenders. Doesn't matter whether it's man or zone, deep ball, short ball, and that was a deep one there. They're making plays on the football, contesting everything. Breeze again here on second and ten. Caught on the left side by Ginn. And they'll bring him down here up at about the 22-yard line. Four yards on the completion, and it sets up a third down. And when you're playing a quarterback with some experience and some moxie, you enter the danger zone when you decide to blitz him because if he's able to diagnose as he did on that play, he can hurt you downfield. He reads defenses so well, doesn't he? He really does, and the best part about that play for him I don't think that was his primary target. I don't think so either. I think he had the read, figured out where the blitz was coming from, and went to a secondary target for a really nice game. And it's complete to Flaner. And he's going to have the first down at about the 38. Breeze finding Flaner for New Orleans first. Saints were the best team in the NFL on third down last year. 49% conversion rate helps when you have Drew Brees back there. It certainly does because he is just so analytical in everything he does. Goes through every progression on every snap in practice. So not much surprises him on game day. now on first down. He's got his man. It's Brandon Coleman. And he'll be taken down across the 50 at the 45 in enemy territory. 17 more yards on that one as they keep the drive rolling. An ex-teammate used to tell me all the time, I hate experienced quarterbacks because no matter what, 
you really can't hide what you're doing. And I think that right there, he knew right away where the blitz was coming from, where his primary guy was going to be, and he ended up going to a secondary target for a nice game. I was just going to ask you, that wasn't the primary target. It, he's so good at that, isn't he? I think he knew right away that he wasn't going to get to his primary guy. I think he read that as soon as he got to the line of scrimmage, knew where the pressure was going to come from, and said, ah, I know how to beat that, and that's what he did. Still first down. Just a yard or two shy of the 30. They call it a gain of 19, and it moves the chains. Let's make this one simple. What a catch, especially the finishing part of getting his feet in bounds, toe tapping, and of course, foot dragging. A little tapestry, if you will. Oh, I like it. Going to get this one down to the 30. Two yards on the carry there. It'll be second down. I do know from experience that when you slow down someone's running game, you're now doing the dictating on defense. And guess what? Now you're getting ready to tee off on their quarterback because they have to throw it all the time. But you still have to be alert for the draws and other plays of that nature to make sure you don't get hurt. Well, Breeze throwing on second down. And incomplete there. A nice hit. Jars the ball free and brings up third down. The Saints on third down. They've hit two for four thus far. This is third and eight. Shotgun now for Breeze. He finds his target, Fuller. And now running right through it. And he carries this one all the way down to the nine. They're able to convert on third down, and that sets up a first and goal. But give the defensive guys a little bit of credit. They didn't let the deep ball beat them on that play, did they? No, the, the drag. That guy can be your safety valve. We saw it right there. Yeah, and it picked up a first down for him, too. Saints are able to cash in for six. Coming into the year, Breeze, 465 touchdown passes. Add another one to the total. You know, it's funny. I just talked with his college head coach, and he told me that when Drew was a sophomore at Purdue, they weren't sure he was truly the starter, even though he started the opening game. And he made a play early in that one where the coach got on the headset and told the rest of the staff, well, fellas, we found our quarterback. <laughs> now we got to make sure we find the rest of our team. <laughs> Breeze hasn't looked back since. So that drive consumes nine plays all told. And it all culminates in a Saints touchdown.
Morstead, the punter, out to kick it off. This fielded a few yards into the end zone. And a pretty good return here. He'll be stopped just shy of the 25 at the 24-yard line. Heading back out there now, the Saints defense. They were able to force the three and out last time, led to the punt, and then led to a touchdown for their crew. So they'll be looking for a little bit more of that, Charles. Well, I think that they created the spark with the three and out. Gave a little momentum to their offense. They said, all right, appreciate it, guys. And they took the ball downfield and stuck it in the end zone. And that defense wasn't out there long. They'll be trying to keep it short here. Play fake to Cook. Here's Bradford. He couldn't quite hold it. Got hit. Ball pops out. Incomplete. Second down following the incompletion. Throwing again, Bradford. And Rudolph has it, the tight end. And they'll get it all the way out near midfield to the 45. So they will accept the penalty and move forward. down throw for Bradford and his throw is going to be incomplete so they're still at the original line of scrimmage here second down and ten To throw again. Bradford over the middle, and it's incomplete. The Vikings on third down. They've converted four times out of six. Not bad. This is third and ten. Bradford again. Throw left side, complete. It's right. Two yards is all they'll get on the completion. It's fourth down. Pardon, I think that completion takes the definition of dink and dunk to a different level, doesn't it? It does, and the defense was right there, kind of played into their hands. Here's Ryan Quigley now, as he'll punt it away for the second time. This one will not be returnable as it sails out of bounds. Drew Brees getting ready to go again on offense. He's played a pretty clean first half, a touchdown, no interceptions. Frankly, that's what they expect out of it. They want to see the ball thrown and thrown well, and he's able to do that and put it in the end zone. They'd love to see more of that before this game finishes. But right now, he's got his team in a good spot. A good spot. Maybe looking for touchdown pass number two here in the second quarter. Here's Peterson as they begin on the ground. And he'll get this one up to about his 14. Credit him with a one-yard gain there to make it second and nine. 
Nice job by that defensive front there to hold him to a short gain on first down. Well played, I must say. Yeah, only getting one yard. There was no room to run. Breeze to throw on second down. And the tight end has it, Fleener. And he'll be taken down, but not before he gets into enemy territory. They give him a gain of 37. There will always be a place for methodically marching the ball downfield. But when you can pick it up in big chunks and strike like that, have explosive plays, that's often the difference in winning and losing. Those types of plays that can knock a defense off balance, that'll drive a team towards a victory. Peterson gets the handoff from Breeze. And he'll get it inside the 40 to the 39. That one good for 10 yards. And that'll make it second and a foot or so. That was a good strong run there. And while it won't pick up a first down, it was definitely something needed by that offense. A positive run. They got a good push by their guys up front. Maybe something they can build on as this game continues. to throw, it's Breeze. Oh, the ball comes out on the hit, but they'll say it's incomplete. Pressure, and that's certainly gonna be a key to this game going forward, and that time, they were able to get in there and influence the throw, remember? Quarterbacks gotta get rid of it. They don't have the tuck rule that they can fall back on anymore. The offense on third down tonight, they've converted three out of five thus far. They're looking at third and a few inches. Now flags will come in. I think this one's going to be on the defense for jumping. Encroachment defense. They'll step off the five yards. Yeah, partner, you know. Defensive end, he wants to get into the offensive backfield. He wants that get off to be as fast as possible. A little too quick on that one. Fresh set of downs here. Here's Breeze. And he's able to get it down to the 25-yard line. A good pick up there. Eight yards on the first down completion. Seeing that play and understanding just how tough it is to cover tight ends, especially the ones running around the NFL nowadays, makes me glad I didn't make it in that league. I would have had a really difficult time. But now you get to sit up here with me. Yeah, and that's fun, isn't it? <laughs> and what a really nice gain right there on first down for them. Brings up a nice second down for them. On second down, Peterson. And yeah, not much of a hole there as he gets it down to about the 24-yard line. He could muster only a yard there, and they'll be left with a third and very short. Pretty good job defensively. Thought he was going to get it, but they knew where that marker was, and they stopped him just short of it. What it does is emphasize that strategic football and situational football is not just played on the offensive side, is it? Defense understanding, as you noted, where the first down marker was and making sure they didn't get there. Third down, it's Adrian Peterson. Officially a gain of just a yard there, but they do convert on third and inches. We remind you that coming up at halftime, we'll pay a visit to Larry Ridley in Orlando with our EA Sports Halftime Report. So they pick up the first down after the run, and now they approach for the fresh set. Ready, 
Here's Breeze to throw. Brought in left side by Snead. And down inside the 15, shy of the 10. 12 yards there as they move the chains. We didn't need to ask around the league, but we got to confirm this guy's a good player. They've got to find a way to get him more involved, call a few more plays that target him. Absolutely, because here we are toward the end of the first half, and that's the first target, not just the first catch, first target. down is Breeze. That is caught at the seven-yard line. And here he'll get it down to the seven. That throw good for four. It's second down. I think it's okay there. They didn't get a whole lot on that play, but it's nice to have a safety valve that's built like this guy. Big target, guy you can spot pretty easily. Put it on him when your other targets aren't open. Second down, here's Breeze. And the hit jarred it loose. It's incomplete. The Saints on third down. They've converted four times out of six. Not bad. This will be third and six. Now flags will come in. And I think this is against the Saints up front. Offense. The Saints on third down. They've converted four times out of six. Not bad. This is third and 11. Again, it's Breeze. And that is incomplete. I wonder, Brandon, I just wonder, you think maybe he was worried about where he was on the field? Was he far enough? Was he close enough to the first down sticks? Absolutely. He was right there by him, and I think he was thinking first down before he caught that football. Yeah, got to catch it first, because if you don't catch it, there's no chance of picking up a first down. On fourth down, off goes Drew Brees, and on comes the Saints kicker, Will Lutz, for the field goal attempt. And Lutz puts this one through. And the lead stretches to six here. It's 13-7. So a good snap, good hold, and that one's right down the middle. Never in doubt. Just the way you used to hit them, Brandon. <laughs> Morstead, the punter, out to kick it off. Fielded about a yard deep. And he's up across the 25 and down at the 28-yard line. Sam Bradford now, along with the Vikings, O oh, heading back out there. Been a decent start for him here in this first half, but they're losing. And I think as the captain of the offense, you probably always feel like you need to do more in that situation. The best have always felt that way, and they won't settle for anything less. So right now, his goal is to increase what he's doing on the field, try to make sure his teammates come along with him, and he feels like if I do better, everyone will do better. And that's what we're seeing from him right now. 
Got to have a little extra determination. Yeah, the little extra determination. He has thrown the touchdown pass. No interceptions for him personally to this point. To throw is Bradford. He's got it complete to Diggs right side. And brought down, but not before reaching the 45-yard line. And now before this first down play, we're going to get a timeout here. As the clock will stop with just under 30 seconds to go in the first half. So here we go, first and 10 now. Working out of the gun, Bradford. And no escaping this time as he'll go down. They got him for a sack. And before the second down play, we'll get a whistle, a signal, and a timeout. As they'll stop it with 25 seconds to go here in half number one. So we're back in the offense getting set following the call of that timeout. Now a second down throw for Bradford. It's complete to Laquan Treadwell. And he is out of bounds on the other side of midfield. That one good for 17 as they're set up better now for third down. The Vikings on third down. They've hit four of seven. This time they face a third and two. And no escaping this time as he'll go down. They got him for a sack. Now the Saints are going to take a timeout on defense. It's just their first, so they'll have two remaining here before we get to halftime. So a defensive timeout, chance to regather, regroup, and get set as we resume action. Here's Ryan Quigley now as he's on to punt for Minnesota. He gets us away. It's a good one. Drawing toward the sidelines. And no return here. Where will they spot it? They say just outside the 20-yard line. AP, Adrian Peterson. And he'll be taken down right around the 27. So we have reached halftime with the visiting Saints out on top as we are off to Orlando now to check in with Larry Ridley. He's standing by with our EA Sports halftime report. Larry? All right, Brandon, back to you guys in a minute. But first, it's indeed time for our EA Sports halftime report. The Vikings are behind right now, but the home crowd should give them a boost. The Saints have come in and looked good as the road team. And will just keep trying to play hard and maintain the lead going forward. All right, let's roll the highlights. Vikings have it early in the second. Bradford's going to complete the pass. This goes for a touchdown. Saints on offense midway through the second. The lead grows to four. Breeze on point with the throw, and he kept off the long drive with a touchdown. 
the Saints up by a field goal. First and 10, Jordan's gonna take down the QB here. This ends up as a loss of nine. Sticking with the same try. Defense will win the battle and get the sack. This will go for a loss of eight. where Brandon and Charles are on the call. All right, Larry, thank you. A fairly tight game here as we get set to resume play in this second half. Both teams appear ready for the fight ahead, and we resume action here in quarter number three. This is fielded a couple yards deep. Oh, able to avoid him. And it's a pretty good return here as he'll get it up to the 29-yard line. Out come the Saints now. They'll go on offense first here to begin the third quarter. They have the lead now. They'll be looking for some separation here as we begin the third quarter. I like the way you term that because now I think they go a little bit deeper into their playbook. They like what they did in the first half. That worked okay. But in order to get the separation that you just talked about, change things up a little bit. Change your tendencies. Try and hit them a little bit more with some things they didn't see in the first half. Let's we'll see if they do just that. The third quarter starts with a run by Peterson. And down he goes, but he takes it up to the 40. It's a gain of 11 yards that time, and it produces a new set of downs. Now, this is an example of breaking down a defense, because on a lot of these runs, he's getting past the point of attack. And guess what he's doing? Forcing the secondary guys to have to make a lot of tackles. again on first down Peterson so from the 40 to the 45 five yard run they're trying to show that they can run the ball protect this lead give it to the backs play a little bit of keep away don't you think and that's probably a good philosophy at this point going to make that defense stand up and stop them And now whistles and a flag, and I think we got a jump here. Neutral zone infraction, defense. So five yards there is one of the big guys up front moved. And in a 4-3 front, you got the two defensive tackles right near the football. I know there's a lot of movement around there, but they're always taught to have one eye on the football. Apparently, that didn't happen. Field strike, they'll look to throw. Under a heavy rush, and down he goes. Eric Kendricks not dropping into coverage. He comes on the blitz and takes him down for a loss of nine. Now we talk about players blitzing all the time. I often laugh and sometimes call it just straight ahead pursuit. What a running start right back to the backfield for him. Yeah, it really didn't give anybody a chance to get up there and stop him. No, I mean, that's really, really difficult. You're asking a whole lot anyway, but when he gets that kind of a start and comes through clean, oftentimes the advantage definitely goes to the defensive player. Hey, 
Now Breeze handing to Peterson on the draw. And he'll get this up past the 45 to the 47. He was able to pick up six yards there, so that leaves him with a third and 13. And that looked like some pretty easy yardage there right up the gut. And he's a guy that has some height to him, so when you don't have to drop a shoulder or create or get through contact or trash, makes it a lot easier to stay upright, see the field, and make a run as we just saw there. On third and long, it's Breeze. And he's got Sneed. And they're able to get this one down to the 25. A big third down conversion with a gain of 28. He's such a good route runner. Shows it there on third down. Very proficient and a good pass. And you know what I've observed over the years in the NFL? The better a route runner you are, the more confidence your guy's going to have in you to go to you in important times because he can trust you being in the right spot. And they connected there and picked up a first down. Well, the offense lining up first and ten. Breeze gives it up to Ingram. And hello, he's going to be knocked backward as he'll be marked down at the 24-yard line. That was a really nice play, be able to stack that one up. When they get back in the huddle, he's got to, he's got to tell his guys up front, great job. They kept people off of him, allowed him to run free and make the hit on the runner. Filled the gap nicely, kept him to just a one-yard gain. Working from the gun, it's Breeze. Sneed's got it. A little second effort there on the strong run. And then drop just inside of the 20. Six yards is the pickup, and that'll lead to a third down. In recent years, the slot receivers really gained stature in the NFL because they could do so many things. Yes, they can line up wide like your normal wide receiver, but to have that kind of courage and toughness to run routes in the middle of the field and become dependable targets for their quarterbacks and move the sticks, those guys are worth their weight in gold. The Saints on third down. They've had good success. Five for eight to this point. This time it's third and three. Now Breeze. And Gens got it. And he gets the first down yardage he needs before he's brought down at the six. They're able to convert on third down, and that sets up a first and goal. That was a nicely run slant route, and what the receiver's trying to do is make the defender think he's going upfield for a deeper route and then breaks it off usually after about three to four steps and cuts towards the middle of the field and now what he's trying to do is use his body to keep the defender away from the football and give the quarterback a really nice target. They'll run with Peterson. It's a gain of a couple and it'll be second in goal. Second and goal. Now a run with Peterson. And he is in for the score. Touchdown, New Orleans. Adrian Peterson. A three-yard touchdown run. And the Saints now add six to their lead. A good sustained drive there in this third quarter, capping it off with a touchdown to give them a nice two-score advantage. It was actually a fun one to watch, wasn't it? I mean, for me, seeing the mix of what they did, how they moved the ball downfield, very sharp, too. Each and every play seemed to be executed with, with great dispatch. Now Breeze. And this is going to be caught. It's good. And that extends their lead by two more. He hits the big target for the two-point try. <laughs> Defenses hate those guys, especially around the goal line. It's hard to decide who you're going to put on him. Are you going to put a smaller corner on him? Are you going to put a safety who doesn't have maybe the same coverage skills? How about a linebacker? He may have the size, but he's not used to really covering in space. That's why the tight end gives you such a great advantage when you're throwing the football.
Morstead, the punter, out to kick it off. That's fielded in the end zone. And no run back here. This will be a touchback, and it comes out to the 25-yard line. Now we take a glance at the offense as they work their way back out for their first possession of the second half. And right now these guys, they're shuffling a little bit, maybe doubting, because three straight drives have ended with them putting the football away. Yeah, so you start pointing fingers at each other a little bit, asking a lot of questions. What are you seeing? What are you getting? Maybe trying to narrow down your playbook a little bit and maybe get simpler rather than more complex in order to try and fashion together a drive. They'll try and get the running game going here with Murray. Oh, and now he bowls him over. Now that's going to go as a loss of six, and it'll set him back for second down. Well, you had to punt on your first drive, and on the first play of the second drive, you end up going backwards. I would dare say they need something good to happen right here, right now. Second down, Bradford. And incomplete there. A nice hit. Jars the ball free and brings up third down. The Vikings on third down. They're at 50%, four for eight. This is third and 16. From the shotgun, it's Bradford. And this is going to be incomplete. Well, no second guessing the call here. It was third and long, so throwing the football was probably the smart play to try and pick it up. But they don't get it, and now the defense goes off the field feeling pretty good about themselves, gaining some momentum as they force them into a likely punting situation. Here's Ryan Quigley now. As the drive goes backwards, so he's on to punt it away. Officially, that'll go as a 52-yard punt. Not too shabby. And the Saints will take over with a first down and 10. And now the Saints get set to trot out there. This is sort of what you would call a put-away drive. Is it, they score here, especially a touchdown, it's almost out of reach. It certainly feels that way, and I think that they're going to call their plays accordingly because what you really want to do, even though you know the scoreboard is still up there and the game's going to go on, in fact, you can take the spirit away from another team. That their drive and will to come back and win can be taken with another score right here. It's still third quarter, but you just get that feel. Yeah, they're teetering right there on the brink, aren't they? Now a play fake here on first down. Looking deep downfield. This is caught inside the 15. And he is down deep into Minnesota territory. It's a big play there for the Saints. 61 yards. And defensively, they were in zone coverage there. Do you have to be a little careful you're losing playing against a good quarterback like he is to not play too much zone? Yeah, you have to be careful about how much time you're giving up. I think it's a good point you just brought up. So maybe if you still want to play zone, you go to a zone blitz game. And you can drop anyone out of your defensive front. Defensive end, defensive tackle. It doesn't matter. You just exchange someone to bring more pressure towards the quarterback and still try and cover downfield. From the gun, it's Breeze. And it pops free. The collision there jarred the ball loose and brings up second down. Throwing on second down. His pass caught at the four. And he'll be brought down here at the three-yard line. Five yards that time on the completion. And now it's third and goal. Well, the strategy was evident there. Get it to your tight end. 
and make it a one-on-one -on -one play with a cornerback. Who's usually going to win that one? The tight end, but not there. Not in this situation. How about the corner defeating that logic and making a really nice tackle? A big play to start the drive got him in this position, but this defense has held firm since, and now it's third and goal. They'll run for it with Peterson. And he goes backwards on this one, losing yardage to the seventh. That'll wind up going for a loss of four, and that's going to make it fourth down. Brandon, I believe that they were in four-down territory, and that's what they were thinking. But after the loss, <laughs> I've got to kick the field goal. No way I'm going to go for it in this situation. But you know some of these coaches, they're extremely unpredictable, and they may go ahead and press it. On fourth down, off goes Drew Brees, and on comes the Saints kicker Will Lutz for the field goal attempt. From the left hash, a chip shot here. And Lutz's kick is good. And that'll push the lead up to 17. So three field goals for him here. And this last one helps him stretch out the lead. And he's been solid as usual. And this is what you need to do. Make sure you get points out of every possession. And so far, they've done a nice job of that. Morstead, the punter, out to kick it off. This is fielded a couple yards deep. <laughs> and he'll be brought down at the 23, make it the 24-yard line. The Vikings offense now, they get ready to head back on the field. These guys had to punt their last possession, and that's become too familiar of a refrain. Too many of these drives just wound up going nowhere. But you know how in baseball, when the pitcher gets a base hit and he's on base, they bring his jacket out to him to keep him warm? A lot of times the punter goes to the sideline and puts on sweatpants or a wrap over his leg to keep it warm. He might need a massage from the trainer right now <laughs> from all the work he's getting. For now to throw on first down. And he's taken down here by the Saints. Alex Anzalone coming on the blitz. He gets him for a loss of seven. And they brought the pressure there just right up the gut, didn't they? Yeah, they certainly did. And you know, when you've got so many different responsibilities as an offensive line, you got to deal with the nose tackle, the two defensive tackles or ends, and then sometimes you just can't account for everyone. The linebacker slipped free. Second down run for Murray. And he roams across the 20 to the 24-yard line. Eight yards here, so that gets him back within striking distance. And now it's third down. Okay, he didn't break that one all the way, but you got to know that he feels like he's right on the verge, and that's probably exactly what he's telling them in the huddle right now. The Vikings on third down, not quite 50%, four for nine. This is third and nine. Bradford. Screen play, McKinnon. And he's able to get this one up to his 30 before he's out of bounds. Five yards on the screen, but that'll take us to fourth down. They completed the screen, but one of the things you worry about is can the quarterback get rid of the ball before he's actually tackled? So your offensive linemen have to hold up the rushers a little bit because you want to make sure you keep your guy's jersey clean throughout the game. Here's Ryan Quigley now as he'll come on for his fifth kick of the night. And he deserves a bronze leg as he gets this one away. And that one hits at the seven, but bounds into the end zone, and that'll be a touchback. Drew Brees getting ready to go again on offense. 
How do you break down his game so far? Just the one touchdown pass, but sometimes the touchdown pass stat category, that doesn't tell the whole story. It really doesn't, not until you balance it with the error side. You know, and in this case, he hasn't thrown any interceptions. So a lot of people would call this almost a pedestrian game, kind of a bus driver game, but that's just really wrong. Being a bus driver is a good thing if you're running a football team because that means you're in control and you're taking your team to the right places. Yeah, he's been pretty solid. Breeze now to throw to the sideline, and wow, what a catch there. He doesn't get a lot, but he was able to get the feet down complete. The completion good for three, and it's second down. I do have to admit, I like it when it all comes together. When the top part, catching the football, right, whether you're catching it with your hands or cradling it, comes together with the legs, in this case, the feet, doing a little toe tap to stay in bounds and complete the catch. And a great job by our crew on the camera shot. Love when you see the grass or on the field turf, those rubber pellets flying up. Great catch. And he almost intercepted it. They haven't picked a ball off yet. That probably should have been their first. And it's third down now. He's lucky to be getting that one back. After what they've done with him all day long with all the targets trying to go after him, he's obviously gotten smart, and his pride has kicked in. Made a terrific play. The Saints on third down. They're hitting at 60%, 6 out of 10 thus far. This is third and seven. Off the play fake to Kamara, it's Breeze. And that is incomplete. Here's Thomas Morstead now. On for his second punt, he'd take a repeat of his first. He gets this one away, and boy, it's another boomer. Here's Sheryls. A nice job on the return there, 16 yards. And possession will switch, hands first and 10. Sam Bradford heading back out as he and his offense get ready to go again. He's been pretty solid, pretty consistent. Just the one touchdown pass, but I think he's managed the game well, no? I would agree with you, and that's what you're looking for out of your field leader. Making sure that you're playing well and not making any big mistakes. Oftentimes, that's how you're judged. Mm -hmm. How big a mistake and when it occurs. No interception so far. They'll like that. I just want you to know that you agreeing with me, that's going to get me through this third and fourth quarter. Are you touched? <laughs> He's patting his heart, boys and girls. He's touched. Respect. Open here, Adam Thielen. And he's taken down, but not before he gets us into enemy territory across the 40. And a nice gain of 21 yards. Offense comes to the line now, first and ten. Bradford with a give to Murray. And able to push his way forward here for a good little gain. Five yards is the tally on first down. That brings up second and five. And that's exactly what you want on a first down run. Pick up five yards, bring up second and five. The defensive line, though, they've got to figure out a way to out leverage the guys up front because the offensive line is winning at the point of attack. They go with Murray again. And he'll go down at the 28. It's a pickup of six and good enough to move the chains. And they really needed to get something going, didn't they? They had punted on the last two possessions. The running game starting to come to the front for them, providing a nice pickup there to keep this drive going. First down and 10 now for the offensive group.
Bradford going to give it to Murray. It's a pickup of four, and it'll bring up second down. On any running play that's called, they're always hoping that it's going to break big and go the distance. But when you get a nice game like that, you're able to do so many things anyway. You can come back and run essentially the same play again, continue to move the ball on the ground, or you can decide to throw the ball now because usually you have the defense back on its heels. And as they come to the line, they will not be able to get off another play as time has run out on this third quarter. We'll return with more after this. This is the NFL, and it's on EA Sports. Back now at beautiful new U.S. Bank Stadium. It's the Vikings in possession of the football, but they need some points. They're trailing here to start the fourth. They'll try to throw now, Bradford. And his throw's gonna be incomplete. Another wayward pass. You know, things started out poorly in this game, and to be frank, they just really haven't gotten much better. And all that does is embolden a secondary. They feel good about what's going on, and they just play better and better. The Vikings on third down. They're right at about the league average, 40%, four for 10. This will be third and six from the gun. Bradford over the middle here to Rudolph. And he picks up the first down yardage as he takes this one down to the 15. Bradford finding Rudolph there for a Viking first. That coach is always harp on the quarterback reading the defense and getting it to the open man. That's good recognition there. And how about what he did after the catch? Yeah, hit your tight end, let him get some rack. Yeah, when he, when he gets moving, not many guys want to come over and put a hit on him, do they? Looks like the defense in press coverage here. Now contact up front as penalty markers come in. Who is this against? Neutral zone infraction, defense. Yeah, he got a little aggressive too early. And he did, wanting that quick takeoff as the ball was snapped, but... I think sometimes those big guys on offense, they're pretty cagey too, right? They make those little sudden moves or those little subtle moves that get you to jump. So following the penalty, now first and five. Following the penalty, it's Murray. And he'll be brought down here at the three-yard line. Seven yards on the pickup there, and now they've got it first and goal. Yeah, once more, strong running. Excellent blocking at the point of attack. They've got a nice little drive brewing right here. Offense walks to the line for play number seven of the drive. They come out here in the eye. Now they'll run. Murray. And he will take this one into the end zone for a Viking touchdown. Latavius Murray, a three-yard touchdown run. And the Vikings are able to close the gap just a bit. But there you go. Nothing really too complex. Block, keep to your assignments. Let them run it in. They did it. Fundamental football. Good blocking. Beats good tackling on that play. End result, touchdown. It's up and good, so they claw back into it. 24-14 now. So that drive goes eight plays, and it culminates with a Latavius Murray touchdown run.
four bath out to kick this one away. On the return, it's Ted Ginn Jr. And he'll get it up across the 20 to the 21 yard line. Now the Saints, they trot their offense out here. Certainly want to avoid what they had to do last possession. That was punt the football because this, this game's starting to tighten up. In a basketball sense, you think about taking a little bit of the air out of the ball, right? Maybe milk some clock, limit the possessions. In this case, they might want to do the same thing but control the game offensively, put together some first downs, put together a drive, and keep it away from them. Looking to jam the receivers at the line here. Press coverage look defensively. First down, here's the run with Peterson. And he is leveled. Knocked down hard at the 22-yard line. Well, Brandon Pace comes into play now because they've got the advantage, they've got the football, but they've got to be very careful about what speed they're going to play. You know, my, my music teacher back at New Paltz, Mrs. Bythema Bagley, used to say, don't go prestissimo when you really want to go Largo. And what she meant by that is don't go too fast when you really want to go at a nice, slow, deliberate pace. I am speechless. I am without speech. He was trying to get it that time to Ted Ginn, and it's third down. The Saints on third down. They've converted six times and could use a seventh here. This is third and nine. Shotgun now for Breeze. Now he'll go deep down the middle. And got his man complete. And he'll be taken down, but not before he gets into enemy territory. And a big 32-yard play on third. And defensively, they just don't seem to have much of an answer for this passing game. Not at all. And look at the confidence that's exhibited here with that type of a lead clock on their side instead of running it they're still throwing it trying to pick up first downs and keeping the football so the offense has it first and ten here's Peterson and he stopped immediately there no gain on the play there second down and a couple of big boys up front defensively. And in that 4-3, those D tackles so vital. Extremely vital. I love how you describe that because if they control things up front, often it's over the guard. Sometimes they slide and make it over the center. It's really hard to get a play started then because a lot of teams want to start inside out running the football. But against a good 4-3, you may not find any space. But on that play, there was zero space, no gain. The tight end, Josh Hill, was the target. And that takes us from second to third down. And the Vikings with an extra defender in the secondary on third. Playing coverage here. There's Breeze. Looking long for Thomas. Got a man. It's caught at the six-yard line. And he'll take it into the end zone for the Saints touchdown. Michael Thomas, 47 yards. And the Saints add on to their lead. And this is what coaches talk about, never being satisfied. No matter what the lead, always trying to increase it. You never know what can happen in this NFL. Lutzel looked to add the extra point. And that'll make this a three-score game as the lead moves to 17. That drive goes 80 yards in six plays. And it ends with a touchdown for New Orleans.
Morstead, the punter, out to kick it off. This is fielded a couple yards deep. And all that worked, but he stopped where he ultimately would have been, and he simply taken a knee, and that's the 25-yard line. Now the Vikings offense gets set to take over here. That last drive, it was a good mix. Run, pass, run, pass. Defense on their toes. And what really helps out in a big way is when you're doing the run pass mix and everything's working, that means that they're guessing wrong every time on defense. They think you're going to pass when you run and vice versa. I would continue that, and when they finally draw a bead on you, maybe you mix it up a little bit, a little play action and throw the ball. And will they maintain that balance? Time to find out. Bradford on first down. He's going to flip one out here to his running back. And he'll get it up to the 33-yard line. Give him eight on the play, and it'll be a second down. Decent start to the drive, but let's face it, they need a lot of things to go right in a short amount of time down three scores. Yeah, they're going to run their two-minute offense here in this game, but this is for future games. Can they get better and be ready for the next time, hopefully with a chance to win? So they complete the pass, and now they face a second down. Operating from the gun, Bradford, and the hit jarred it loose. It's incomplete. The Vikings on third down. They've converted five times in their many chances thus far. Here it's third and two. Now Bradford. And this is going to be incomplete. All right, they're going to try and keep hope alive here on fourth down. They're going for it. They're going to run it with Murray. Murray fighting. Lost the football. But a Viking was able to corral this one, and Minnesota will keep possession. He needed two. He barely got back to the line of scrimmage. And the Saints are going to get it back and in great shape. Now we'll see what Michael Thomas and the rest of the offense has in store here. Seems like the measuring stick for a receiver for a great game is 100 yards. Well, he's well past that now. And as we analyze how he's getting him, that's where it really becomes fun because, let's face it, they keep sending coverage at him, keep trying to put the pressure on, yet he finds ways downfield and finds openings. That's a really crafty receiver. And a great spot to start this drive from here. Now Peterson. And inside the 20 before he's brought down. And a nice carry there of 15 yards. When a coaching staff sees their team run the ball this successfully in the fourth quarter, they're really excited because you can plan for a running game all you want and want to press that advantage when you get it. But for the most part, it's a little bit of a surprise. And right now, they've got to keep that going want to continue to grind out the clock because it's definitely in their favor at this stage of the game. Can they close the game out and continue to do exactly what we just saw there? And that's run the football. So the run gets them the first, and now they operate with a fresh set of downs. Bree's going to throw. That's caught. It's Thomas. And all the way down inside the five to the four. It's a really nice 15-yard pickup, and now it's first and goal. 
He's played a great game. It continues right there, even with this lead, confident to throw the pass and have the reception made. There's no doubt who the leader of their team is, is there? There's no doubt who they want to ride all the way to the finish because strategy would tell you run the football, run the clock down. Instead, they're letting him throw it because they feel that confident in what he's getting done. They go play action here on first down. And no escaping this time as he'll go down. They got him for a sack. Anthony Barr in from his linebacker's spot. He's able to drop him for a loss of about 10. Well, that was point counterpoint, wasn't it? They decided to throw for it on first and goal. Instead, the defense counters with pressure, and the defense wins, getting a big sack. Second down now after the sack. They run Peterson. And he's going to get about four down inside the 10 to the nine. Partner, I know we're in a goal to go situation, but my goodness, think about running the ball here. Not even a thought, is yeah, it? Defensively, they're in a prime spot. And I think the defensive guys are probably expressing themselves to them as well. I wouldn't run it here, guys. You might want to try throwing it. Breeze now on third and goal. And he's going to be dropped. Back at the 15-yard line. Ryan Robinson with a big-time sack on third down. And it'll be a loss of seven. There's a little bit of defense right there. Nickel set, five defensive backs. They just snuffed out every round that was going. Quarterback never got rid of the football. Fourth down, off goes Drew Brees, and on comes the Saints kicker, Will Lutz, for the field goal attempt. This a 33-yard attempt. And Lutz puts this one through. And that will push this lead up to 20 now. So it's three more points, and that widens things out even further here in the fourth. Hey, in this league, you can never have too much. So if you're in range, grab the three whenever you can. Morstead, the punter, out to kick it off. This fielded a few yards into the end zone. And a couple yards deep, he'll go to a knee. He won't return it. And they'll take it out to the 25. Sam Bradford now, along with the Vikings, O oh, heading back out there. And the passing game, I mean, look at the numbers. It's fallen off. When a team is struggling, sometimes you look at the quarterback. When the quarterback starts to struggle, who goes over and picks him up? Yeah, that's always a big one, isn't it? Usually, there's a quarterback whisperer somewhere. And what I mean by that is, whether it's an assistant coach, whether it's one of his best friends on the team, someone that can get in his ear, get with him and say, all right, my man, what do you need? What's going on here? So there's one person he can lean on. He's got to lean on that guy right now. He was looking for Adam Thielen there. That'll bring up second down. And on second and 10 now. Throwing again, Bradford. And the Saints pressure gets him. Brought down for a sack. Sheldon Rankins in there to get him for his second sack of the night. The amount of sacks that they've absorbed in this game is absolutely extraordinary. Let's just face it. 
This offensive line flat out cannot handle this pass rush. It's been demonstrated time and time again. In search of something here after the sack, it's third and long. Bradford getting his guys ready. Working out of the gun, Bradford. A hit as he throws there, incomplete. We've seen this quite a few times in this game. Offensive line, unable to keep leverage, unable to keep people away, facing a lot of pressure. Fortunate, fortunate just to get rid of it. One of the reasons they're down is that inability, though, to stop the pressure. We saw another example of it there. Here's Ryan Quigley now, standing just outside his own goal line. He's averaging just under 50 yards a punt as he gets this away. Now it's Ginn. There he goes again. A very good return that time. 18 yards. And that will come the offense as they take over. Out onto the field comes New Orleans. And they're not going to play this conservative, I don't think. They had the field goal last time, and they're up, but they're looking to put a drive in the end zone. Oh, I agree with you totally. No one is, goes out on the field and says, all right, let's just settle for three, except in certain situations, trying to ice a game, that sort of deal. Most of the time, it's end zone, and that's what you're thinking, and I believe that's exactly what they're thinking as they begin this one. Yeah, no quarterback ever goes out there saying, hey, let's get three, <laughs> right? <laughs> not one that I've ever met. Peterson, and he'll fight his way forward to about the 48-yard line. Give him a couple on the carry there, second and eight. Brandon's all about pace and tempo now for him. They've got the advantage, so I'm going to put musical terms for you. You don't want to go prestissimo. That's too quick, too lively, right? But you also don't want to slow it down too much. You don't want to go lento. What you really want to be is moderato. Uh, nice and even, uh, nice and steady, get those gains, and close out the game. I think that chicken parm from last night's gone to your head. <laughs> and they'll lose a yard that time, and that's going to lead to a third down. Brent, it's clearly a running situation when you're up in the fourth quarter. They're going to have to stack the box and make it difficult for them to move the ball. Made it very difficult right there. Now they need to repeat that effort. Yeah, bring seven, eight, nine, whatever it's going to take to slow them down. Offense in a little bit of a bind here. Nine yards to go on third down. They'll run. This is Kamara. And he'll get it into enemy territory just across midfield at the 49. Four yards on the pickup there, but it's going to take him to fourth down. Here's Thomas Morstead now, as he's on to punt for New Orleans. And that is much too long. That's into the end zone for a touchback. And now out comes Minnesota. And on the last go around, they really couldn't get anything going. They had to punt from deep inside their own territory, which means you're going to lose the field position battle as a general rule. What they're looking for now is a little more consistency, move the ball at least a few times on offense, get a couple of first downs, and hopefully flip the field. Yeah, just something to build off of. That's what they're looking for here. down Bradford and he takes a shot on the release as this will be incomplete I think he had to unload that one before he wanted to he was right up in his grill I think he was a dentist there without a license don't you <laughs> just not enough time for the play to develop just lucky it wasn't a fumble really
Throwing again. Bradford on second and ten. Wide open receiver complete. A good pick up there, a 22. And there's another completion to the tight end. And let's face it, it is hard to overthrow a six foot six inch target. It is indeed. Quarterbacks like their speed guys. They like that huge six six target that they've got in him. They really do. And it reminds me of what one great tight end told me once. He had told his quarterback, just make sure you throw it up there. You know, kind of like put up in the top shelf where the kids can't get it. Fresh set of downs here. Now Bradford. Going with a screen for Murray. And he'll get up to the 43-yard line. A good convergence there defensively. Only a yard, and it's second down. In order for a screen pass to break big, a lot of things have to come together and be well executed. But all it takes is one small thing to go wrong and keep it from being a big game. Second down, nine yards to go. Time for a break. We're back to finish this one off after this. So the Vikings in possession of the football as we get you reset. They're looking at second down now as they search for a consolation score. So what will they do on the ground, through the air? Let's see, second and nine. Again, it's Bradford fighting to stay upright. But he can't get away forever, and down he goes. Face mask penalty, and Charles, you were a defender. You know sometimes in the heat of the moment, it's hard to keep your hands away from that face mask. Sometimes you just get out of position as a defender when you're trying to make a tackle, so you end up flailing away, and your hand gets into the wrong spot. and 10, Bradford. Under pressure again, and down he goes again. Tony McDaniel in there to get him the sixth time. They've sacked him tonight. Now a second down throw for Bradford. His throw incomplete. Well, you won't hear any boos from this home crowd on that call. No, not at all. And it's been a long day for this crowd waiting for this game. It's been a long evening as well. Finally, they feel they got a call. First down throw for Bradford. He'll find Thielen working the middle. And he gets it inside the 35 and just shy of the 30. 12 yards on back-to-back -back plays there, and that's another first down. On first down, Bradford. That is caught at the 7. And they do stop him, but he takes it all the way to the 2. And I know it's hard in live action, but you've got to keep your hands away from the face. That's a 15-yard penalty. You work on it all the time, making sure your target area is lower and trying to keep your hands away from the face mask so you don't get the big penalty. Go, go, go. 
So after that big gain, let's see what else the offense has up its sleeve. Bradford to throw it. It's caught in the end zone. Touchdown, Minnesota. And that touchdown puts us in a position to have a discussion, doesn't it? Now it'll be a two-score game after the conversion. Yeah, I mean, there's no doubt with a two-score game they're going to have to onside kick it. We'll just see if they've got a miracle up their sleeve. And you wonder what onside kicks they're going to use and in what sequence if they hope to have a chance to win this game. Now four bath for the extra point. And that will cut this lead down to 13. That time, a six-play drive. And it's polished off by a Viking score. So two scores down, time definitely not an ally, but here comes the onside kick. And the Saints' hands team able to rein this one in. They knew they needed a miracle. They had to have that onside kick. They didn't get it. Well, as we knew, even before they put the, the toe to the leather on that one, their chances of getting that done, slim and none. And I do believe we saw Slim just leave the door, didn't we? We did indeed. I think we're down to none. Out onto the field comes New Orleans. And they're coming off a three and out, my friend. I think they've got to look at that play sheet and go to a spot that they haven't gone before. Time to shake things up a little bit to try and get this offense moving. Okay, so how do you do that? How do you shake things up? You look at what you've called before, <laughs> realize it hasn't worked so well. Go to so something well, else. And maybe you try and find one of those special plays from one of your better players, and maybe try and hit something big and get things going in the excitement area. Really nice starting field position here for the offensive unit. They run the counter now. It's Peterson. And he's going to fight his way forward here for a modest game. And now the Vikings are going to stop it here on defense with a timeout. It's just their first. They've got two more to use here in the final stages. Five yards left for the offense. It's second down. Again, Peterson. And this carry not as productive. He swallowed up at the line of scrimmage. And another timeout called by the Vikings now. That'll be their second, so one more chance to stop the clock here. And we'll be back. And now following that timeout, the defense back out onto the field. Third and four. Breeze leaves this one with Camara. And not much running room. Down to the 32. And play is stopped here. Timeout. It's the defense calling the timeout here. It'll be their third and final timeout. So as they talk things over, we'll step aside.
All right, so the timeout over and all 11 men back out onto the field for the defense. Fourth down, off goes Drew Brees, and on comes the Saints kicker, Will Lutz, for the field goal attempt. It'll be a 49-yard attempt from the left hash. And Lutz's kick is good. And that will extend their lead even further. So yet another field goal to end a drive. That has been a very common theme. He's now hit five of them in this game. Yeah, Brandon, as an offense, you hate that you've had to call on your kicker so often, but you have to love the fact that time and time again, he's come through. Morstead, the punter, out to kick it off. Fielded about a yard deep. And all that work, but he stopped where he ultimately would have been, and he simply taken a knee, and that's the 25-yard line. And now out comes Minnesota, and they're going to need another score. Got one last time, but still down here. When you're playing catch-up, Every possession becomes crucial, doesn't it? It's vital. Get back out on the field, punch it in the end zone again. They know it's not easy, but what they do have going for them, they did score the last time. They think they've got a good formula working. And what about the defense? Well, now you're just saying to yourself, okay, gave up a score last time. What adjustments do we need to make to slow them down now and get the ball back for our own offense? Is it more pressure? Is it more zone? What do they have to do? They're trying to figure that out themselves. We'll see if they can figure that out right here. Here's Bradford. He's going to hit his man out of the backfield. Complete. Call it a one-yard gain on the play, and it'll make it second down. And right now, defensively, you love that, don't you? I mean, you'll give them that play. And they'll take it every single time. This is almost like nickeling and diming it downfield, and too much time is going to run off the clock. Second down, Bradford got his man complete over the middle. That's Morgan. Only three yards on the catch. It's third down. They'll get to the line here, but remember, it's also third down. From the shotgun, it's Bradford. Throwing right, and that's complete. 23 yards on the play. First down now, but the clock continues to move. And now the spike comes with 15 seconds on the clock. And on the outside, they're playing press coverage. To the air again with Bradford. And incomplete there. A nice hit. Jars the ball free and brings up third down. So incomplete on second down. Now they'll look to convert here on third. Bradford again. complete with just six seconds left on the clock. I remember a coach telling me a long time ago the difference between playing corner and safety in the NFL. Corner is like the Autobahn. Everybody just flying by, and these corners have been really busy in this game, although they got it done on the last play. On the last play, yes, but there have been some good numbers put up against them offensively. The three straight incompletions, they don't care. That hasn't dissuaded them. They're going to go for it on fourth. 
Now flags will come in. I think this one's going to be on the defense for jumping. Encroachment defense. So a jump there defensively. And it's a killer. Watch the football. Don't move across the line of scrimmage until the ball moves. No move to get the offense off the field. They're going on fourth and five. And now whistles and a flag, and I think we got a jump here. Encroachment defense. A free five yards as the defense jumps. I know it's an anticipation game for them, but it's also a reaction game, and they reacted poorly on that one. So here we go, first and 10 now. They'll throw again, Bradford. He's gonna let it fly. And that will be incomplete as time has run out on this football game. Charles, we saw a lot of points go up in this one, certainly defensively, Stuff that they can look at on film, don't you think? No doubt about it. And they've got to go back and check where the errors are, how they're going to fix them, and continue to get better at what they do. But they also need a little adjustment with their confidence. To give up that many points, even if you win a game, that can hurt you. So that'll just about do it for Charles Davis. I'm Brandon Gordon. You've been watching the NFL on EA Sports. For more, log on to easports.com. From Minneapolis, good night, everybody.